Chapter 3 After breakfast the next day, Flora sat on top of the manure pile while her lazy brothers snored away again. Too bad for them. They wouldn't be making any new friends or learning new things or getting ready for trouble. She stood up on her hind legs and waved her front hooves in the air. Luna would probably think that looked pretty spirited if only she were here to watch. Luna. Luna. Flora put all her thoughts into wishing the cat back, and then there she was, slipping through the junk heap, her beautiful white flag of a tail following behind. Flora bundled down the manure pile to meet her. Hi, Luna. Hi, Flora. Luna hopped on a fence post. Watch this. Flora spun around in a dizzying circle. She dashed to the top of the manure pile, did a two-legged walk, then raced back down, barely managing to stop herself before banging her snout into the fence. Wow, said Luna. How's that for spirit? Flora was breathing hard. I never knew pigs could have so much. Luna sounded as if she meant it. You almost looked like a horse galloping up that manure pile. Like Nessie? Flora put her small hooves up on the post and looked over at the large hooves peeking out from underneath the horse stall door. Nessie used to be the fastest thing on the farm, but she's older now, and her front leg bothers her. Don't get on her bad side, because she can still kick when she gets grouchy. She hates being cooped up for too long. That was exactly how Flora felt. She waited to hear more about grouchy Nessie, but Luna lifted her left hind foot and began licking between her toes. I've been getting ready for trouble, said Flora. Luna stopped licking, but didn't put her foot back where it was supposed to go. She looked at Flora as if she didn't understand. Flora tried again. You know, like you said, it always finds you. Oh, yeah. Luna sat up straight. The trouble with trouble is, it's a hard thing to prepare for. Speaking of trouble, this farm would be a great place to wander around if it weren't crawling with dogs. Maybe you've heard them. Flora nodded enthusiastically. What do you know about dogs? I know they howl just to hear themselves howl. I know if they get off their leash, and they always do, then look out because no one is safe. Flora felt a little thrill go through her. She would be happy to teach a dog a lesson. Why is the farm crawling with dogs? Training, said Luna. The dogs on this farm are being trained for expeditions which are the th same things as adventures. Adventures? Flora couldn't believe her ears. How could anyone be so lucky? It starts when they're puppies, about your age. First they get used to the lines and ropes and harnesses. Then comes the real work. Trained for adventure. Flora couldn't get over it. They pull loads that get heavier and heavier, Luna said. Dogs might be annoying, but on this farm... They are the hardest working animals of all. Why do they have to pull so... Flora stopped. Luna had slipped down to the ground almost without moving a muscle. Now she was staring at the top of Flora's head in the strangest way. Flora shook her head in case she had a bit of manure stuck to one of her ears. But Luna didn't stir except for her tail, which stuck straight out behind her and trembled at the tip. Then she lowered herself into a crouch and her eyes got very wide. Flora realized they weren't fixed on her at all, but on something behind her. Flora turned slowly. The dirt beside the fence was moving. No, wait. It wasn't dirt. Flora peered closer. It was the same color as dirt, but hairy. Then Flora saw a long, naked tail. Look out! It's a rat! Luna whispered. Chapter 4 trouble. Flora was delighted, but scared too. The creature in the dirt fit Mother's description perfectly. Mother said rats were a terrible curse on any farm. They were dirty, they were thieves, but mostly they were meaner than a bad toothache. And she also said piglets should stay far away from them. As Flora took a step sideways, she felt soft fur slide by her. Luna was creeping low to the ground toward the hay bale. Luna, don't go any closer, Flora whispered. Shh. 
Luna brought another paw forward and put it down gently on the dirt. Rats in the rigging, she murmured. Time to tangle. Luna flowed ahead one more cat length, gathered her back feet underneath herself, and then exploded onto the rat. The rat shrieked and turned his teeth to meet his attacker. Luna, Flora shouted, get away! But the fighters became a single white and brown ball bouncing off the fence. Dirt and fluffs of fur flew up around them. Flora's rump bumped against the fence on the other side. She hadn't even noticed that she was backing up. The rat's long hose of a tail flailed against the ground, and for an instant he broke free. Then Luna was on him again. She seemed to have hooks and daggers. She was bad already. She pinned the shrieking rat on his belly. As he strained his head back to land a bite, Luna sank her teeth deep into his neck. He quivered, mouth open, and then lay still. Luna did not release him at first. Her eyes blinked slowly, but her teeth stayed right where they were. The swirl of dirt and fur settled on Luna and all around. She gave the rat a shake and then ever so slowly released her grip. After taking a step back, she hopped up on a fence post and began to clean herself. Flora looked away from the frightening scene, only to see Mother and a half circle of awestruck piglets watching too. Mother came forward. On behalf of myself and my family, thank you. Luna stopped her cleaning. Please don't mention it. We all have our task on the farm, and I am happy to do my part. It is very much appreciated, said Mother. And now, if you would be so kind, please remove this nasty, vile creature from our home. Naturally, madam. Flora looked back at the rat. His mouth open. his mouth... His open mouth showed long yellow teeth. His eyes were open too. Jumping down from her perch, Luna stepped around the rat to find a good grip, then seized him in her teeth and, moving backwards, began to drag him over the dirt. Flora was surprised at how big the rat was, as big as Luna's head. He was also clearly heavy, judging from the way Luna strained as she tugged. Flora trotted forward to help. Flora! Her mother's, vo her mother's voice made her stop. Not another step. I thought you said I should be helpful. Flora watched as Luna slowly eased herself through the slats in the fence. The rat disappeared one, one tiny jerk at a time. Flora, honey, let the cat do what cats do. You just worry about what pigs do. And what do pigs do? Flora wondered. She was afraid she knew the answer. Nothing. As she drifted off to sleep that night, her mind filled with a determined thought, almost a plan. Maybe most pigs did nothing but eat and sleep, but that wasn't good enough for this pig. When trouble came next time, Flora would be ready. Chapter 5 After breakfast, Flora gathered the piglets together to announce a new game. It's called Cats and Rats. Yay! Her brothers cheered. Who wants to be a rat? The cheering stopped. Flora, came a warning. Flora glanced around to see her mother rubbing her shoulder against a fence post. She wasn't looking at her children, but clearly she was paying attention. Flora turned back to her brothers. Good news, everyone, she said. In this game, nobody has to be a rat. Her brothers cheered again. Okay, all you cats. Flora's eyes swept the ground to either side of her. We need to look for a rat substitute. In a moment, they had two suitable imitations. One was half an orange with all the juice squeezed out. The other was a balled up paper bag. Flora decided to use the paper bag first and nosed it into the circle of piglets. Stand clear, she commanded, backing up a few steps and then crouching onto her belly. Watch and learn. And when I give you the signal, say, Rats in the rigging, time to tangle. Flora crept forward, making an effort to stay very low. This wasn't as easy as Luna made it look. Flora's legs dragged on the ground instead of stepping cleanly, but she managed to stay down. Now, she said, Rats in the rigging, time to tangle, the piglets chanted. Flora concentrated on making her tail twitch and hoped it was working. 
even though she couldn't see. She drew a few steps closer. Then gathering her legs under her, Flora sprang forward and leaped on the paper bag. It made a satisfyingly loud crunch as she stomped it into the ground with her hooves. Her brothers cheered and then, under Flora's watchful eye, tried out their own rat attack styles until their paper bag was a tattered mess that no longer crunched at all. All right, Flora announced. Time for rat number two. Unbelievably, the others were already tired. As she watched, they flopped down against one another for their morning nap. Well, she didn't need them to practice. Flora crouched and attacked. The orange peel flipped up and rolled toward the fence. Flora charged again and missed. Her shoulder smacked into the lowest board. Ow! But wait, was that a cracking sound she'd heard? She looked around to make sure the piglets hadn't stirred. Mother was asleep too. Flora leaned against the fence board again. It moved under her weight. She pressed forward. The board gave a soft wooden creak and then parted into two pieces. She slipped through until her head was free, then carefully and quietly crawled all the way out. Flora looked around. She was standing near the junk heap. There was the broken wheelbarrow. There were the broken tools and chicken wire. She had escaped the pig pen at last. Mm -hmm.